Good evening, everybody. Hello, Matt. Hello, Dean. We're feeling to begin pretty soon. There's a few tankers around. And to call sign. Osprey earlier down by... Uh, Alphys. There's more than just this oiler down here. There's actually several, several, several aircraft here. Let's see when there is. Dean, how's the weather? Oh wow, we have two Deans on the list today. Hello, Deans. I'll show you the overall picture here. That's all the commercial. This will be the military. Two one, one, two, 
Congress Con. That's right. There's the machines. All doing their thing. It's really touchy. Hmm. There's the other one just pop up out of nowhere. It's one of the Nogs. Nogs are at a Altus Air Force Base. C-17. Chinook. Blackhawk. Where's he at? 2375. There he is. Now if you guys don't use ADSB exchange, you should. It's really good because you can toggle both the civilian and the military now. Keep in mind, not all the military are showing. Some of them are squawking, some are not. And anytime you see a tanker, there's usually a lot more aircraft than you can see on ADSB exchange. This guy coming from, he's coming from Altus as well. Oh, what's that? What's going on over at Tinker? Okie two two in the pattern. Ruffo seven. That's a cool call sign. He's really got an interesting path. It's an RC-135. Top cap 43. It's another RC-135. Those are rare to see flying together. What else do we got?
flying the same path. The common uh, air and overfueling frequency around here is 291.9, which is something that's pretty pretty common. You might try putting that into your scanner. Hello, Don. Hope you're having a good evening. That's a live flight at Lubbock. That comes pretty quiet tonight, but uh, the military is doing a pretty good job tonight. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little hoarse tonight. There's somebody. Out of Altus. Here comes another Nog out of Altus. It's kind of cool that you can actually uh, monitor and, you know, map them at the same time. Creaky chair. I need to give me a silent chair here. Hope the audio is good, everyone. Let me know if it's too loud or not quiet enough. Oh, he just popped up right there. Thank you. 
Smog 8-6, I think that's a Pegasus tanker. He is over, I think he's in the Talon Moa. This is a White Sands missile range over here. A couple of C-130s on Arizona. Mix of civilian and military aircraft tonight. Like a setup for our practice refueling right there. You can wait down there. Osprey. Or any Caprock Canyons. He must be, uh, he must be gonna go shoot the, see they've got a new, uh, flight training route inside the canyon. So they're gonna do some random refueling. in my plane view. Dean, it was a Dean number one, Dean Musket. It was a beautiful day here at Amarillo, which is rare. You just have a lot of wind. A little cool, nice, sunny. Any air shows in the UK you're going to? And I don't see the Osprey. There he goes. He keeps popping in and out of radar right there. Fred, no, it's Reach. It's leaving. Oh, where did he come from? Hawaii? 
Yeah, I did. C5M on his way to Hawaii as well. C-130. Wow, that's a long way for a C-130. Imagine that all the way from Hawaii. Wow. C10 by Sacramento. Getting busy up here. Oh, that'd be a good show, Dean. Fly Legends. Do they have Spitfires and uh, Hurricanes in that? Or maybe some old uh, RAF bombers? Sorry, we're filling right there. Should be based at a Clovis at a cannon, but I mean, there are like Four shows I want to go to uh, this year. There's one at Dias. There's one down in Slayton. One at Cannon. And I think there's one at Tinker as well. But they're all within the same week, practically. Oh, yeah, the P-40 is pretty cool. Do they have any Lancasters, Mommers left? And he went away again. I like watching refueling at night because sometimes the uh, the other stuff, the the weird stuff that is not acknowledged, especially if it's not a full moon, will come up flying. You hear some strange call signs. Today I heard an old call sign I hadn't heard in a long time. Spear. Spear 2-1. Haven't you heard Spear since the F-117 days? I mean, that turned my head around, but I didn't see anything. So I'm going to redo my antenna system this spring. Actually put them up a little bit higher so I can clear some buildings to my... To my ace. Get about 10 feet more height on them. By the way, uh, Dean Frank says hi.
you know, the few times I've done refueling missions, one I did in a KC-135 from Altus over the Gulf of Mexico, and it was a B-1 bomber. And the next was with F-111s and EF-111s over the uh, Sun Grade Cristo Mountains in uh, New Mexico. In fact, uh, that whole week we shot from, uh, and I'm going to find the video and post it, from uh, Ken Air Force Base. We actually got to fly in F-111 bombers. And uh, then I did a... Uh, Another refueling flight out of Clovis about a year ago where we refueled V-22s, Ospreys. Let me see if I can get some more refueling flights. They're kind of hard to get these days. Not as easy as they used to be, but they always make for a really good photo op. I'll tell him that, Dean. Well, Dino says hello. Tell you what, I sound just like him, don't I? He's retired now, Dean, um, and uh, he has m too much time on his hands. He's not liking retirement very much. So Nog is somewhere in here. I meet up on this track down here. I don't know where he's going. He might, oh, he's turning too. The thunder chickens is what we call them around here. He might be setting up to refuel. And we did the refueling in the Osprey from, from Cannon. It was on a choppy day. It was almost nearly impossible to catch that field basket. And I will post that video. I will tell him, Dean. Yeah, I saw him this last weekend. Where's everybody else from? Let me know where you're from. And if you have any questions, too, about monitoring my monitoring setup, I'd be glad to answer them. Oh, Australia. I love Australians. I've met several of them. They come up here. They kind of like Amarillo because Amarillo reminds them a lot of Australia, at least parts of it. There was a Discovery Channel crew that followed us all over New Mexico back in the 90s and they were, they were all Aussies and they were, they were fun. They liked to drink a lot too, which was, was fun as well. It's funny, Dean Sperandio, I guess you, that's how you pronounce it. Dean Musket is from Great Britain, and when he's down here in Amarillo, he used to live here, right? Six years, I guess it was? Six, seven years? I don't know how long you were here, Dean. But people used to think he was Australian because of his accent. Which is not at all Australian at all. Yeah, then it's, it, it always tickled me when people say, are you from Australia? I don't think it, uh, I don't think it, um, it was funny to Dean either. He, he was like, 
I also thought he was Arab. He has kind of a rough beard. I first met him at the fence here in Amarillo, taking pictures. And I said, he doesn't talk like we do here in Texas. When I used to go back east. Oh, that's right, you were. Always on July 4th, he was Australia. I don't know why. He should... You should have, you know, they should accept the fact that uh, we got underneath the Queen's, out from underneath the Queen's rule was just something that was bound to happen. You can't run a territory or an empire that big. Steve Ford, southeast of, oh, D D Detroit, huh? As we say down here in Texas, Detroit. Motor City. Much military up there, Steve? Take a look and see what's going up in Detroit. Well, there is some military to the southeast of you. Some C one C seventeen flying around. There's uh, some over the Great Lakes. So somewhere in here, in here I'm gonna take it. Somewhere in here or on the other side of the Selfridge. Okay, cool. Oh, you get to see A10s A tens all the time. That's my one of my favorite airplanes. That's probably one of the Selfridges there. No, nope, it's not. Reach Rhino. Well, if you guys ever get Tamarello, look me up. As Dean can tell you, our uh, our airport's quite unique here since we have so much military traffic comes in and out of here because we have a a runway that's over five miles long, and uh, we get a lot of military cross country. Yeah, yeah come here to refuel and they also come here to get a little bit of food or they uh, do training here. So we see all kinds of stuff here. It's pretty amazing. You can be, you know, right up against the fence. Nobody cares. Shoot pictures all day long. And then we have a, a bell plant here. It's the bell, the Osprey plant, which is also building uh, the V280 Valor and the, what's the other one, the 360 Bell 360, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Invictus, I think. That's it. Oh, yeah. And yeah, Dean just reminded me, we saw Martin Freeman here. Uh, Harrison Ford has been here. If you go between anywhere on the East Coast in California, especially if you're in a private jet, you have to stop here and get gas. I met John Travolta here. Um, a lot of astronauts, well, like NASA astronauts come through here. NASA? Yeah, NASA. PH, and I'm about to get to MC 55A Peregrine. Or do they operate on the same military bands that we listen to down there? From uh, up here, we listen from uh, our military UHF is about 225 to 400 megahertz. He just popped up right there. It's a nog, I bet you. Yeah, it's a nog. My foot. Oh, 
Alpena, Alpena or Alpena? Alpena Combat Readiness and Training Center in Camp Grayling up north. Let's see what's going on down under, shall we? I love this program. Mitch. So it's about one one thirty in Sydney. I don't know what time zone you were in. One thirty in the afternoon. Just going on over here, Paul. Interesting. Any good, Dino? It's an Airbus uh, A400M. So, Dino, where on this map is? are you located at? Dean, musket. Very fun tonight. Oh, that's okay, Dean. I said, uh, well, I'll, let's go back to the map. So, Dean, where are you located at in compared to these two aircraft? Like in this area, right? I wonder what NOG stands for. Let's see something. They're all called NOGs. Or Caddo. East of Sheffield. But Sheffield? Sheffield? By 20 miles. Okay, cool. NJEP. NJEP would be a trainer out of, um, probably a T-38 out of Shepherd Air Force Base, which is down Wish I followed, but I don't see him on the. He's walking. I don't know what happened to the V twenty two. He just went somewhere.
This is where I live. I live right here. Alright. Here's our airport. There's my street right there. Here we go. This house right here. Doncaster is a famous World War II field, wasn't it, Dean? If I'm not. If I recall right. Like out the ambulance call. Now this is to both deans. Are there any restrictions on scanning in either country? I know that I know the Brits are big scanning fans. But what about Australia? There's only a couple states here in the in the United States where they they frown on it. Uh Having one in your in your car, having a scanner in your car, that's just like uh, I think Arkansas is one state. Of course, they're kind of backward in Arkansas anyway. Show you the uh, see the way. here's the uh, that's my mixer board there. I can call anything up I want to. So, like, if I want to bring my shortwave up, I just really helps. No police or ambulance is frowned upon. Well, here they've gone mostly digital, except for some of the uh, constabulary, I guess you'd call them, um, the county sheriff's offices. And uh, those, uh, no live ATC. That is, this is why we, this is why we won the war, Dean. <laughs> Can you, you need a short wave, right? Though you can you can listen in to what's going on over in, uh, in the Ukraine, right? Now, Dean Musket, if you go to my uh, blog, deepbluehorizon.blogspot.com, and you put in a search term Ukraine frequencies, it'll bring a whole bunch of shortwave uh, frequencies up for the Russian military, uh, including the bear net. And most of those have been compiled by Brits, so they're pretty good. They've been listening to the bear nets. Usually what it is is uh, Russians bitching about their equipment and stuff like that. I don't speak Russian. I know you speak fake Russian. So maybe you get some fun out of that. But it's on my, uh, it's on my uh, blog, deepbluehorizon.blogspot.com.
Ain't Sperandio, you ever been to the United States? They're getting ready to, to refuel there, this guy. Well, let me know when you come up here. When you come to the States. Uh, I used to go to Red Flag back in the day, but I got a lot of friends who still go there. And I can hook you up with them. And they can put you in the right spots to get the best photography. feeling. He's catching him. Yeah, if you want my email address, you can always drop me a line at W... Quiet, I'm talking here. W-E-B-B-F-E-A-T at gmail.com Yeah, that's it. W-E-B-B-F-E-A-T at gmail.com. You got it right. Maybe we'll get some comms from these guys. They're really close enough. about. Now a big plane like the C-17 there actually pushes a bow wave of air in front of it. And having been in a tanker, I have felt that tail push up when a big plane comes up there. Then it settles, and they come up right up in the sweet spot, right behind it. I'm using uh, a, a military surplus UHF antenna that I bought on eBay for the Klansman radio. Uh, there, was a, there was a guy in England selling them for like 40 bucks a piece. And what's really cool about it is the fact that it's cut for the band, but it's also made as a very... Uh, very resilient to wind. It actually will move. Everything won't snap. It all 
you can blow it with 10 mile an hour wind it won't do anything to it all the the elements are kind of like um, uh, thin metal that flexes real well kind of like a tape measure would which you know we have a lot of wind here and we're a little we're the windiest city in in, in Texas and you need that because our winds have been known to trash antennas in a heartbeat so they must be they must be joining now because I only see one of them Should hear them if they're not going radio silent. Copper. Copper's from where's he from? The Florida. Eglin. Looks like a tanker fest down here today. Medlin, Odessa, El Paso, Roswell, Carlsbad. I do have some amplification on this antenna as well. So I bought a UHF. It's for cable TV, actually. It's a preamp that's made for as a distribution amp it's made as a distrib distribution amp for uh uhf tv and it works really well it gives me a, gives me a little bit of an extra signal when there's noise Extends the range a bit. You can find them on eBay all the time. You know, just look for uh, just look for low noise amplifier, cable, or CATV system. You'll find them. They're like twenty bucks. See when they separate them if they're when they separate if we'll get two radar returns again. Hello, Chuck. Welcome aboard. Chuck, where are you from? So, Chuck, there are there are two aircraft here refueling. We can only see the one right now, but there's a NOG, which is uh, from Altus Air Force Base. It's refueling is about 110 miles, 120 miles south of where I am. You can see they came on Altus Air Force Base there. That's in uh, southwest Oklahoma. She's, yes, southwest Oklahoma. And there's another tanker. It just came up. Which one is this? Oiler 25. And this one is no call sign. There's two C-130s playing down here in the wise, close to the White Sands Missile Range. They're actually over the, the mountains. But there's a tanker up here. Oh, he just went off. That's in, uh, that's in central New Mexico. The oiler. There he is again.
to another about another fifteen minutes. I'm going to end this session. So if you have any questions or comments, well, well, you still got me. I've only got the Azores once, Dean. You must be a. You must, what are you using as an antenna? Just a piece of wire? Big monitor up there. Go the other way. That's three of the scanners in the back. We'll get used to this thing sooner and later. Well, Dean, if you, uh, and I mean the other Dean, um, <laughs> if you, uh, you can hear a lot, not this kind of stuff, but you can hear a lot of, uh, military on, uh, shortwave, if you've got a shortwave radio. Thanks, Steve. Been a long time. Long time putting this together. This is only part of it. You can't see behind me. There's a lot more radios behind me. We'll do that on another night. They both went off the scope. Two 
So Oklahoma City, that's Tinker Air Force Base there. Oh, he's really burning up pattern tonight. Those two guys are. Oh, I live right here. He's right here. Oh, yeah, Steve. F 111s are great. I miss those airplanes. I got to fly on one. But I am going to transfer the video that we shot of F 111s. Uh, I just got to find a I gotta find a working VCR. They're hard to find. Uh, Texan two burning up the pattern here in Amarillo. Do you remember the F-111 used to do what they called a, a party trick where they would fly over Amarillo, dump their fuel, light it with their afterburners, and then the scanner would light up with uh, UFO calls. Everybody was sure this was an airplane crashing or is a UFO. Let's see where everybody is today. Here we go. Oh, civil ones. Euler coming back up. Yeah, it really was. When we flew out in one, doing some TV specials, I'm a TV photographer. Anyway, um, we flew out of Cannon, and what's cool about the F-111 is you basically sit next to the pilot, just a little bit back. And we had to do the training where you had to do the ejection training and see if you could tell when you know, your oxygen was not doing well before we went up. And then we flew a flight simulator, which was fun, and they crashed me. It was great. And uh, then we did the actual flight in uh, F-111s. We flew over the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, which are over here, this area here. So we flew out of Clovis and went over the, the mountains here as we came down and over here. And... uh he put on the paved tack system, set the dial for like, you know, uh, 100 feet above the ground, and then we went up to one side of the mountain at 100 feet. You could basically count the pine trees on the way down. And we got to the top, and it's, it dives down the other side of the mountain, and I'm waiting for this thing to pull up. And uh, 
the pilot goes, you got to trust the system, man. you got to trust the system. Sure enough, it it pulled up 100 feet over the desert, and we took off like a bat of owl. That was fun. I got a lot of slides somewhere. I gotta dig them out of a box somewhere. Took a ton of video, ton of photos. You don't realize how big an F-111 is until you're next to one. This is a no-go area right here. They can't go below 5,000 feet because this is where about 3,000 nuclear warheads are stored. You can hear from me, though. These that will return here aren't storm. Those are actually wind farms. Do one more trip around the world before I go to bed. Is there anything interesting going on? C5. Interesting. Hop over the pond. Oh, that's interesting. C5M. KC-135R. Probably listening for missile tests. 
of North Korea. Anybody have any questions before I call it night? Hope you had fun. We'll try and do this again. Oh, it's been fun, guys. I'm going to call this uh, episode to a close. And a success. So everybody have a good night. We'll maybe do this again soon.